Understood. Calm down. He's still getting blues. Charlie, he's getting out of the way. Let him stay there. Car goes off. Same s***. Car is off. Race is over. Are you f***ing kidding me? This is potentially going to be the first upgrade for HRT in the history of the team and the update fails. I don't believe it. Hello and welcome to the second episode of the Cucumber Challenge here in Malaysia. As you just saw there, we put all that effort into our practice and R&D testing and it just blew up right in our faces. So. Uh, here we are in Malaysia. It is wet for the race. We managed to qualify in 10th place, so it's going to be an interesting uh, start to this race here. We had some decent pace in qualifying, so uh, in all honesty, I'm actually hoping that the rain sticks around, so uh, hopefully we can get off to a nice start here and then manage the tyres as we get further on into this race. So I'm not too sure how the tyre wear will fare in this race. We're supposed to be doing two or three stops, so we're supposed to be stopping every three laps in this race. So that's every four laps, sorry. So it's going to be interesting. Five red lights and away we go here in Malaysia for round two of season three of F1 2013 career mode. We've got off to a terrible start. We're going to concede three, maybe four positions coming into turn one, so it's been an absolute calamity. Now we've got to make up these positions coming into turn two and three. Going up the inside of Mark Webber there, we gave him a bit of a touch, but now we're going side by side with him and another McLaren. We touch Webber there as we throw up our hand in frustration. Narain Karthikeyan, the cucumber himself, is not happy with proceedings, and he's going to put it up into fast to try and gain as much time as he can on this main straight before going into turn four now. Breaking, trying to go the inside of Vettel, but it doesn't work out there. We give him a bit of a touch there as we lose uh, retraction there. Once again, this HRT really isn't faring well in these uh, opening couple of corners in this race. However, in qualifying, we were pretty comfortable in those conditions, but then I think in qualifying three, it went to full wet conditions, so uh, that's why we didn't have any pace in that final Q3 session. That's why we qualified 10th place, so I'm hoping the intermediate conditions stick around and then we might be able to, able, you know, we might actually be able to fight in this race. We'll have to wait and see, but we are uh, going a bit deep into the uh, middle sector hairpin there, so that's a bit disappointing. That allows Sebastian Vettel to get away, so unfortunately he's uh, pretty much bolted away now and I've got to try and defend myself from Mark Webber and the cars behind, I believe. Jensen Button and Sergio Perez are behind me as well, so it's going to be tough to keep those cars behind me because they've got a lot of uh, straight line speed and some really decent traction. So 
what I need to do is pretty much uh, make the most out of the final uh, sector as I can. Uh, that penultimate corner is going to be a very tricky corner for me because it's so hard to get the rear traction and get the car going on the exit of that corner uh, leading on to two massive straights. So that's where I've really got to concentrate, try not to make any mistakes uh, throughout any of the corners on this track and I should be okay. The AI tend not to really go for bold overtakes as long as you don't make mistakes in these kind of races you should be able to maintain track position but here on lap 5 we've got a couple cars coming in for their scheduled pit stops. I was scheduled to come in on that lap as well but I'm staying out one lap extra because I heard the engineers say that the rain was coming in around lap 5 or 6. I mean heavy rain that is so I'm uh, switching straight onto the wet tyres so by doing this I'm going to uh, in fact gain a whole pit stop over the field hopefully uh, at least over the cars that pitted a lap earlier so uh, those cars that came in they put on intermediate tyres I'm going straight for the wet tyres as I said before but it's going to be interesting to see what the other competitors do on this lap as well they are scheduled to put on intermediate tyres but are they smart enough to recognise that the rain is getting heavier and will they in fact react to what I'm doing we'll have to wait and see Pit stop is three, four, five. No, we're, have, we're having to wait for everyone in the pit lane there. So we've dropped over three seconds just waiting for cars. And that's going to cost us big time in the standings of this race. We've lost almost four or five positions there. We even lost a place to Nico Hulkenberg, who overtook a couple cars while he was on his outlap. So um, hopefully that doesn't come back to bite us later on in the race. We're going to have to re-overtake these guys um, due to losing those positions in the pit lane. But... It looks like the cars in front of me are on intermediate tyres. So that's very interesting and that's uh, going to prove to be very beneficial for us as we're going to have the superior grip on this lap until they come in for a new set of tyres. So they're going to lose about 15, maybe 16 seconds in the pit lane. So that's going to promote me possibly into the top five and even into the podium positions as we give Sergio Perez there a bit of a bump there. He was just going so slow on the intermediate tyres. They're definitely falling away on this lap and they're dropping you know, multiple seconds a lap now. So they're coming in, they have no other choice but to come in and to put on a new set of wet tires. Look at them, every car in the pit lane now has put on a set of wet tires. And even the leaders now are coming back in because they put on a set of intermediate tires early trying to do the undercut. So unfortunately, because we got held in the pit lane, we lost that crucial three seconds and the gap to the cars in front of us looks like it's about three seconds. So. If we didn't get held up in the pits there, we wouldn't have had to overtake those cars before and then we would have been able to uh, be three seconds up the road and we would have had a whole lot more positions uh, in our hand. But now it's lap 12, I'm trying to stretch out these tyres to the very end. I believe a couple cars around me actually came in again on lap 10 for a new set of wet tyres. Uh, such is the tyre wear around this track and, so, and the tyre scaling on this game just means that the tyres really don't last long in a 25% race. It's something I'm not really used to. I haven't done a 25% uh, career mode race in a very long time. It's been about six months since I've done that. So uh, having to adapt to the new tyre scaling system is um, uh, proving to be very tough. And my tyres are pretty much all red now as um, I've stayed out uh, just about a whole step longer than what I should have now. So it's uh, proving to be very tricky to uh, keep the car in a straight line right now. As no as uh, Kimi Raikkonen goes around my outside through turn two. I just don't have any traction at all. My tyres are absolutely shot. As you can see there, the rear tyres are red and my front tyres are orange. It's just been the fact that I don't use traction control and I spin up the rear tyres a little bit more than what the AI do. They're uh, a lot better than me in terms of managing their throttle control. So that means that their tyre wear is a lot better. But of course they do have new tyres, so that's why they are multiple seconds a lot faster than me. And Mark Webber, after making his pit stop a couple laps ago, he was about 15 seconds, maybe 16 seconds behind. But now, in a matter of laps, he's right behind me and he's going to take my position as soon as I make a mistake. So here we are on the last lap. I just need to keep the car on the racing line, try and get some traction out of these tyres. It's not gripping to the road at all. I'm just aquaplaning a little bit and just trying to keep this car in a straight line. It's not working. Lewis Hamilton now takes his first race win of the season in Malaysia here and he'll be uh, right back in the fight for this championship. As my game paused there, I had a uh, pop-up come up on my PC, so that uh, took me away from the game. But now we're back, 
And I'm trying to negotiate this tricky penultimate corner. It's very tough to get the car through here in a straight line, especially when you consider the condition of my tyres. And we've lost three positions there. I've just got no traction now. It's an absolute nightmare. I can't even get to full throttle until I get to fifth gear. It's unbelievable. Using up my curves, trying to go up the inside of everyone again. I've got to get it pulled up and then turned in again because I don't want to lose these positions again. And it looks like we may well do that again. Mark Webber and Felipe Massa get the spot back. But now, in all this chaos, we are going to score our first points for HRT. Get in there. Thank you, Engineer. What a race that was. Our first points for HRT in a rain-riddled race. We managed to come through the field. Although we had terrible tyre wear, we did have some decent pace in tricky conditions. I think once the upgrades come in a couple races time, we should be back on the pace. And I think, you know, our dry pace is pretty good. And I think that in just a couple races time, we could see our first podium of the season coming. And now we're in 10th place in the driver's standing. So we've got six points on the board for HRT. And that should do us fairly well in the Constructors' Championship. So uh, we're looking good so far. We're bouncing back from that terrible round in Australia. So looking forward to the future races, I think we can get some solid points and make a, a decent impact on this championship. But that's been the Cucumber Challenge for Round 2. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until the next one, guys. I'll see you next time.